Welcome to our Five on Five. Please welcome back Senator Ron Wyden. Senator, good to see you. Good to be back. Thanks for taking the time for us today. So I know you spent part of the morning meeting with seniors and some nursing home workers talking health care. As the GOP tries to get enough votes to repeal and replace Obamacare, what's your biggest concern? My, my hope is we will not see seniors be used as a political football again. As you know, Medicaid picks up the cost of two out of three nursing home beds in America. And I can tell you the seniors were really concerned about that again this morning. What I want to do is stop playing defense, and I want us to be able to play offense. Particularly, we need to take new steps to clamp down on the rising cost of medicine. And I'd like to see Medicare lift the restrictions so it could bargain to hold down the cost. A lot of talk uh, that Republicans may move on to tax reforms after last week in, in health care. What's the one piece of advice you would give them on taxes? I would tell them the history, and I said this to the president directly, the history of successful tax reform is to make it bipartisan. For example, in 1986, um, Democrats were right in saying that the tax code had been captured by special interests. Republicans had a valid point as well in terms of saying that the tax code is such a mess that you don't have the certainty and predictability for job creation. So again, we've got to find ways to accept each other's good ideas. Don't take each other's crummy ideas, but good ideas, the one that Democrats care the most about, is looking at approaches that help the middle class, that protect jobs here, protect their job, job security, and then we want to promote small business. Special Counsel Robert Mueller is looking at possible collusion between Trump team officials and Russia. Can he subpoena the president's tax returns? And that's something you've been talking about for a while. Is that something you he, hope he does? He has a very wide berth to go after the information he feels he needs. And I, I want to be clear because some people were talking about the prospect of the president firing Robert Mueller. You fire Bob Mueller without uh, cause. That is going to trigger a constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. And of course, the press reports in the last couple of weeks have said that he's focusing on what I call the follow the money issues. That's been my focus as a member of the Select Committee on Intelligence, and I, I think that's long overdue. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Much more with Senator Wyden in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Senator Ron Wyden. Senator Penair has filed for bankruptcy, ending passenger service out of Klamath Falls. What's your reaction to that, and where do we go from here? It's obviously very disappointing, and as far as I'm concerned, we just roll up our sleeves and get at it. The area is growing e economically. Clearly, it can support this kind of air service. I'll be back on the phone trying to look at ways in which we can get service back. A million people are set to visit Oregon for the eclipse uh, just in a couple weeks. Are you concerned at all about the risk for wildfires? Yes, and I had a briefing this, this morning. As of today, we have 10 times as many people fighting fires in this area as we normally do. That's number one. Number two, uh, you've got real fuel buildup out on the forest floor. It can get hot. It can get dry. You have a lightning strike. All of a sudden, you have an inferno on your hands. And Senator Mike Crapo, he and I, uh, are working on a bipartisan uh, effort to fix this broken system of fighting fire. Also, we know that there can be a lot of people coming through Southern Oregon, no matter where they're going to go to see mm -hmm. the eclipse. And folks today were very concerned about the accidental risk of fire, humans camping, and that, that sort of thing. So there's a lot of public education ahead. You're no fan of President Trump's ban on transgenders in the military. Is there anything Congress can do about it? Yes, we can certainly take steps to uh, overturn it, to mitigate it, and look, what I want to do is put national security first. There are people who have the qualifications who ought to be able to serve, and this idea that bigotry comes before national, secu national security, I just think is contrary to our values. It's been an interesting couple of weeks in the White House with the rise and then fall of Anthony Scaramucci. Do you expect anything to change in how business is conducted there now that John Kelly is chief of staff? Well, John, John Kelly clearly wants to uh, make things different, but of course uh, the president uh, is somebody who even just this morning is up tweeting away about various things that uh, he doesn't agree with. Look, what we need to do, two things. First, we're at our best when we set the bar high, and too often that has not been the case at the White House. And second, we need more bipartisanship. For example, right before uh, we left, uh, Marco Rubio and I introduced a major financial reform uh, package to finally disclose uh, the identity of these shell corporations, because that's where a lot of financial mischief 
uh, goes on. It's a bipartisan bill. We ought to pass it. Second, Orrin Hatch and I introduced or had suggested that we're going to make this September a top priority of the Children's Health Program. This is a program for youngsters uh, in families just above uh, Medicaid. A lot of those families are walking on economic tightrope. Chairman Hatch said a priority for him, and he uh, joined me in a statement, was working on making sure that we improved health care for kids. That and the Rubio bill, those are the kinds of approaches that we need in Washington. Senator, good to see you. Thanks for, Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Stay with us. We'll be right back.